Hey guys, it's Dr. Stacey Gusev. I just wanted to say thank you to everyone for coming out virtually to the Leptospirosis Talk last night. There were some questions because of the overwhelming response. We got about 100 questions in the space of 15 minutes. So obviously we couldn't answer all of those. So we're gonna take kind of the most common ones and cover those um, in this video today. So Jesse, if you wanna take it away. So first off, we'd like to start with hospital environment. How long does lepto stay in the environment for, like in the hospital potty or after urination? That's a great question. So definitely um, leptospirosis is very stable in the environment, kind of depending on environmental conditions. Definitely wet conditions are uh, very conducive to kind of keeping it in the environment. One study showed that leptospire organisms could survive for 10 months in adverse conditions, which they considered to be around 40 degrees Fahrenheit, and up to 20 months in kind of higher, more, um, more advantageous conditions up to 86 degrees Fahrenheit. So it can last for over a year, which is not great considering kind of depending on what your environmental conditions are. All right, the rest of the hospital environment ones had a lot to do with protocol with patients. Could you talk a little bit about Dove's protocol? Great, yeah, definitely. So just to kind of give you guys an overview um, as far as PPE requirements and how we typically deal with hospitalized patients and what our technicians are instructed to do as far as caring for them. So the staff handling the patient is instructed to wear a gown, gloves, goggles, and a face mask and use a foot bath for the first 48 hours of therapy. Whenever possible to treat these patients last if they have multiple patients just to decrease the risk of contaminating other patients with their urine. After 48 hours, the staff should still wear gloves when handling the urine or blood or any items such as IV catheters, urinary catheters, bedding soiled by the patient's urine until the time of discharge. One question was about what cleaner we use. We use Vindicator, but there are other cleaners that are also effective against leptospirosis. Um, we clean their cages, their runs, anywhere they were exposed to. Typically, we'll wait 10 minutes and wipe down that area with a dry cloth and then repeat that process. There, when we walk animals, we do have a spe special specific area that they walk. So there's a gravel area where leptospecs have urinated um, that we walk them to specifically. And what we do is thoroughly soak that with Vindicator solution from a designated sprayer that's just used for that. And then as far as disposal of urine, we did have questions about do we pretreat the urine? We do do that before disposing of it. So it's recommended to use gloves, masks, and goggles during the disposal of the urine. The urine collected is collected through a closed collection system. So most often these animals have urinary catheters in place and is taken into an isolated area in the hospital for disinfection and disposal. Um, it's mixed with a one to 10 ratio of bleach by injecting bleach into the urine collection bag. And then we let it sit for 10 minutes before we empty that down the drain. Um, and then we just throw the collection bag away. So that kind of covers most of the questions that came up about how we handle leptospirosis patients for our hospital protocols. We do still have some questions about vaccines. Sure. So first off, do you still recommend lepto vaccines in geriatric dogs? Well, I think a lot of it depends on their environment. So if it's a fairly active geriatric dog that's going out and walking or potentially going hiking with the owner, especially in wet areas, definitely. You know, I think that would be a big risk of exposure. If it's a tiny dog that doesn't leave its owner's purse, I would say chances of risk of exposure is much lower. So it all really depends on the lifestyle of the pet. Thank you. If a patient has missed a few years of leptospirosis vaccines, should they be boosted like puppies or would that not make a difference? Yeah, so as far as I know, leptospirosis doesn't require a booster. It's just typically a yearly vaccine. So you can just restart with that vaccine even though you've missed a few years. Is there any credibility to the idea that small dogs shouldn't get the vaccine because they are at a higher risk for reaction? Yeah, so that was kind of a historic thought and it may have been from when the vaccine was first originated and coming out that maybe there were a lot more reactions. But there was a 2005 paper that came out in JAVMA by Moore that documented um, that there was no increase in adverse events diagnosed within three days of vaccines compared comparing lepto to other vaccines. So it's really been disproven, at least in the literature. Thank you. Now we're gonna move on to some testing questions. Mm -hmm. If you run the map and it comes back negative for every serovar, 
is it also worthwhile to run the convalescent test later or can you safely assume the dog is negative? Yeah, so as far as the mat, which is, refers to the microscopic agglutination test, which looks for um, basically antibodies that the body has formed to the leptospirosis organisms, that, you know, anytime you get a negative test because you don't know at what stage you're necessarily testing the animal, within the first week of them being becoming ill with leptospirosis, their body may not have had enough time to make antibodies. So a negative MAT test within that time frame cannot definitively rule out leptospirosis. So definitely this is, the MAT test is one where you should get your acute test done, even if it all comes back negative, and also get a convalescent test in two to four weeks to allow for the antibodies to be made, since we never know when a pet's coming in what stage of infection they're in. All right, thanks. Um, if previously vaccinated, would you recommend MAT test at all? So again, it all depends, you know, the PCR testing is available. So if you know that an animal's been vaccinated, you may choose to do PCR on the blood and urine instead, or you could also still do the MAT testing. You would probably look more closely at the serovars that are in your vaccine, which are Gribotyphosa, Ecterohemorrhagiae, Pomona, uh, and Canicola, and may read kind of less into those titers being elevated, but you would, again, need convalescent titers to kind of confirm or deny an actual diagnosis of leptospirosis in that case. What is the general turnaround time for MAT results? So according to the IDEX website, it says about three to five days. Moving on, um, after doc starting doxycycline, how long until the patient stops shedding in their urine? That's a great question. And a lot of that um, is really helpful just to protect our staff as well as people when they take their pets home. Um, and it usually, shedding usually ceases within two to three days of initiating doxycycline therapy. So that's just really helpful because as we kind of went through with our hospitalized protocols, we do kind of step down at 48 hours and that's the reason why. What is the prognosis expected of animals who are positive? The prognosis expected um, for animals that are positive you know, what, what they've published on is with early recognition and appropriate treatment, the survival rate is approximately 80%. And can a previously infected lepto patient get reinfected? Yes, so definitely. You know, you, there are different serovars in the environment. There's over 200 serovars. We know of probably about seven to 10 that cause acute illness in dogs. But what we um, need to be aware of is that even if an animal has been naturally infected with lepto, it doesn't necessarily mean that that will confer lifelong immunity to that particular serovar. So yes, they can always either get infected with the same serovar, since we don't know, or different serovars that are in the environment. Our last question is, do you have any recommendations for papers that address the most common clinical signs at presentation? Yeah, so definitely I think a great reference for leptospirosis with uh, any questions that you might have is referring to the 2010 ACVIM consensus statement um, that came out and it's basically what a consensus statement is, is it's a panel of veterinary experts that have gotten together um, and found best practices on how to deal with particular diseases. So the nice part about our Journal of Veterinary Internal Medicine is it is open access. So basically, if you just Google 2010 ACVIM leptospirosis consensus statement, it will pop up, you can download a PDF, you can print it out, read it, have it for your reference. And that's really a great source to go to if you have more questions. Well, that's all we have for right now, but thank you so much for answering these questions. Absolutely, it was my pleasure. Thanks guys.